Okay, so before we start converting uh, exponential form to logarithmic form or logarithmic form to exponential form, let's take a look at the rule that governs those transformations. So if we have the exponential form b to the y equals x, where b is the base and y is the exponent and then x is the solution, okay? So let's say this is 3 squared, so 3 squared would equal 9. So b would be 3, y would be 2, and x would be 9. What we're going to do is we're just going to take those numbers or those letters or whatever we've got there and that's just going to go into this form here. So this is called log base b of x equals y. So we're going to take the base of the power and put it as the base of the log. Then we're going to take the solution to the exponential form and that goes here right next to the base. Then the exponent that was attached to this base comes over here, and that's what the log is going to be equal to. In problems 1a and 1b, we're asked to take the exponential form and change it into the logarithmic form. Now you can see that these have already been solved because 10 squared is equal to 100, and 81 is equal to 3 to the fourth. But what we want to do is go ahead and identify what do we have here. This is going to be x. This is b, and this is y. So we want to go from b to the y equals x to log base b of x equals y. So we're just going to rewrite it in logarithmic form. So log, then base b, so base 10, of x, 100, equals y, so 2. Okay, so Rewriting 100 equals 10 squared into logarithmic, logarithmic form is log base 10 of 100 equals 2. Now coming over here to 1b, we've got our x here, our b here, and our y here. So again, we're going log base b of x equals y. So log of 3 of x 81 equals y, 4. So 81 equals 3 to the 4th is the same thing as log base 3 of 81 equals 4. Okay, so here in problem 2, we're asked to solve what is log base 8 of 32. So what we want to do is we want to convert this from a logarithm over to uh, an exponential form. So this is log base 8 of 32 equals y. So if we turn this into exponential form, we're going to go b to the y equals x. So what is our base? The base is 8. What is the exponent? Well, that's what we're going to be looking for. So we're going to write in y. And then what is x equal to? It's equal to 32. So in order to solve this, what we're going to do is we're going to take both sides down to their lowest possible bases. Because here's the, here's the rule that you need to know about uh, having uh, exponents and solving for the exponent. Once you get both sides down to the lowest common base, then you can drop the bases and you can set the exponents equal to each other. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say, what is the lowest possible base for 8? It's going to be 2 and it's cubed. So we're going to go 2 cubed, but we can't drop the y off because that y is still there. So we're going to go 2 to the 3y equals, and then 32 is the same thing as saying 2 to the 5th. So now you can see that we've got the same base on each side of the equation. Once we've got the same base, we can drop the bases. So we drop the bases and set the exponents equal to each other. So 3y equals 5. Now you just solve for the uh, variable. So y equals 5 over 3. So the answer to log base 8 of 32 is 5 over 3. Now one of the rules that you've become accustomed to throughout math is that if you don't have a number in certain places, then it's assumed to be a particular number. So if you don't have a number in front of a variable, it's assumed to be 1. If you don't have a number in the nook or the index of a radical, then it's assumed to be 2. Well, with a logarithm, if we have log of x 
and we don't have a base there, then that base is assumed to be 10. Okay? And that's what we call a common log. So what we're going to do here is we're going to apply the common log to earthquake in ma uh, magnitude and intensity. And the question that we're given in the book has to do with two earthquakes that happened off the coast of Sumatra in Indonesia back in 2004 and 2005. The formula that we've been given is log intensity 1 over intensity 2 is equal to magnitude 1 minus magnitude 2. So magnitude is referring to uh, the Richter scale. What number is it given based off of the Richter scale? Now the intensity is how strong was it? So we tend to think that if we go from a 7 to an 8 on the Richter scale that a 7 is 10 times weaker than an 8 or an 8 is 10 times stronger than a 7. And that's because we're working off of a logarithmic scale. So what if we're given a, 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 couple of in, a couple of magnitudes, how can we determine how much stronger one earthquake is than another? We're going to use this particular formula with a common log. So this is log base 10. Now, the 2004 earthquake off the coast of Sumatra was a 9.3 on the Richter scale, and the 2005 was an 8.7. So we're going to plug those in for our magnitudes. So we've got log base 10 of intensity 1 over intensity 2 equals 9.3 minus 8.7. So work this down, and this becomes log intensity 1 over intensity 2 equals 0.6. Okay, so now what we've got, we've got a base, we've got an x, and we've got a y. So we need to change this over to uh, exponential form. So our base is 10, our exponent is 0.6, and then our intensity, the difference in intensity, is going to be 10 to the point 6. And 10 to the point 6 is approximately 4. So the earthquake that occurred in December of 2004 was approximately four times stronger than the earthquake that occurred in March of 2005, even though they were only separated by six tenths of a point on the Richter scale. Okay, so for problem number four, we're going to be asked to graph the function y equals log base 3 of x. Now, to be able to do this, we're going to have to do a little bit of, a con of converting. We want to convert from, a log from logarithmic form into exponential form simply because it's going to be almost impossible to graph out of logarithmic form. But remember that we do have an exponential form that is equivalent to log base b of x equals y. And that's going to be b to the y equals x. So if we change to this form, then we can graph based off of this, or we can graph this based off of this. So let's find our base is 3, then we get 3 uh, to the y equals x. Now what's going to happen here is you're going to put in values for y. So y is actually going to become your input and x is going to become your output. It's a little bit different than we've always done it, but it will work. So what we want to do is choose some values for y that make sense. So let's go negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And let's find out what we get uh, when we plug in those values for y. So we would get uh, 3 to the y, or 3 to the negative second, would be 1 ninth. 3 to the negative first would be 1 third. 3 to the zeroth, remember anything to the zeroth power except for 0 is 1. And then 3 to the first is 3, and 3 squared is 9. So now we've got five points, and we've got enough to graph the logarithmic uh, formula. So go negative two, and then, I'm sorry, go one ninth, and then down two. So right there. Then go one third, and down one. Go one, and then zero. Three and one. And then nine and two. So our graph is going to look like that. Now, remember that the exponential form and the logarithmic form are inverses. So if we wanted to actually show what the uh, exponential form 
uh, would look like or uh, what the inverse of this would look like, we would simply just take all of these points and we would reverse them and we would end up with something that looked like that. That's why I've got y equals x drawn on here. Because remember that inverses are always going to be reflected across y equals x. Okay, so as is the case with most things that we do with logarithms, we're going to have to change up the way we do things when we're graphing them. So if we've got a translation to graph, uh, we would normally just be able to run through a set of values, put them, in, put them into an xy chart, and we'd be done. But it's never that easy with logarithms. So you notice that we've got log base 4 of x minus 3 plus 4. This is in the form of y equals a log uh, base b of x minus h plus k. But we can't just do, we can't just do what we would normally do and, and figure it out by using a table. So what we're going to do first is we're going to graph the parent function. So we're going to go log base b or log base 4 of x equals y. So that's going to give us 4 to the y equals x. So just like we did on the last one, we're going to take this and we're going to insert values in for y and then figure out what x is based off of that. So again, I'm going to use negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So plugging in negative 2, you get 1 16th. Plugging in negative 1, you get 1 4th. And 0, you're going to get 1, 1 is 4, and 2 is going to be 16. So, we're going to go ahead and graph the parent function there for log base b, or log, log base 4 of x. So, we've got 1 16th and negative 2. So, I've got to put my tick marks in here. 1, 2, 3. So I've put 16 tick marks in for both of them. I probably should do this above here as well. Got 14 on that one. So 1 16th and negative 2. So that's going to be right there pressed up against the y-axis. 1 4th and negative 1. So again, pretty close to the y-axis. Then 1 0. Then 4 1. And then 16 2. So we have a really, really flat graph for this one. And that's what happens whenever you start getting the bases to be higher in number. So what we're going to do next is instead of creating an xy chart for the translation, what we're going to do instead is we know that this is going to be move three units to the right, and it's going to move four units up. So that's what we're going to do with each point. We're just going to move them. So we're going to go one, two, three units there. And then one, two, three, four units up. Then one, two, three units there, and one, two, three, four units up. Then one, two, three, one, two, three, four, have there, and then one, two, three, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, one, two, three, four. So we get, this is going to be the graph of the translation. So all we've done is we've taken all of the points for the parent function and we've moved them three units to the right and four units up. And that's how you're going to have to graph a transformation when using logarithmic form.